Jessie is a very, very ambitious woman. A woman that doesn't take no for an answer. An entrepreneur, philanthropist, mother, army veteran, a former princess, daughter, wife, mama, many, many things. My journey as an entrepreneur has started a few years ago when I took a leap of faith. I was scared and yet I thought, why not try it? I created Finding Butterflies Consulting and after human highness, two ventures from scratch. And I must say it was the most amazing experience so far. And that is how I have landed to where I am today. The path of entrepreneurship has made me who I am today as a working mother. I have created a vampire which stretches all over the world. I have a charity, Professors Without Borders, which benefits hundreds and hundreds of young people around the world, uh, specifically as well young girls. Um, then I have created a few businesses, one of them Human Highness, which are bespoke capes made by women, for women, to kind of like let your inner goddess shine out and empower yourself or empower already what you are and make it seen to the outside world. Then my consultancy is a consultancy that works with many governments and institutions and individuals. It's about development and um, sustainability, strategic communication. How do we talk about the things that matter? That is what my vampire is about. It is also about what do I leave behind the legacy to my children? What do I leave behind for them? My vampire is for them. And I hope that one day they will continue with the legacy that I am creating right now for them. My why is, why do I wake up every morning? I wake up every morning because I want to make this world a better place. Do I succeed every day? Of course not, but I try. Failure is part of this too. My why is that I want my children to find a better world than how I have found it myself. Is that difficult? Very. Because with climate change and all of these pressing issues in the world, politics, economics and pandemics, it is really, really difficult to work in an ever-changing environment faster now than ever before. But my why is that, why not? Why not wake up every morning and try to be my best? Because if I don't do that, why would I wake up in the first place? My royal life was an adventure. It was like climbing the Kilimanjaro, if you want. I learned so much. Um, as I would have learned as well, being married to any other man, I was very, very young. I married when I was 21 years old, a young girl. And now when I look at, at, at some of my friends who are 21 years old, I imagine, wow, I was already a mother of a little boy and I got married and also in a, in a such a historical institution. So um, I have learned a lot, but my parents were always wonderful human beings and they have raised me well. As such, I was prepared and I knew that if I behave properly and just with respect, then the rest will come from itself. Um, which means that, you know, living in a royal family and growing up with him, because that is what it was, it's half of my life. We were married for 12 years and I'm 36 now, separated for five years. So it was half of my life. And as such, I think they are people as we are too. And they're also just trying to do their best. And, um, you know, I was growing up with my ex-husband. And, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because there's a saying that says, and I said that to my sons as well, Gabriel and Noah, who are 16 and 14, you have seen mama and papa grow up. Because... We as well were very young, so that comes with good and bad parts, mistakes and achievements. And as such, um, yeah, it was really an adventure. I have met incredible human beings, um, have traveled the world, uh, was wearing amazingly beautiful clothes and, and jewelry, of course, um, which women often tend to like, well, I do. And uh, yeah, it, it was really a fantastic time. I have... Yeah, the, the Grand Duke Jean, for example, um, who sadly passed away, 
was the most amazing human being I have ever met in my life. And uh, he was devoted to his countrymen and, and women. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen, whom I have met several times. It's just, just that devotion, that love. And yeah, it, it makes me look at our systems and how leadership is happening in a different way, just because I was able to see behind the golden curtains. I'm inspired by the people around me. They say that you are the five people around you. Surround yourself with people that matter. Because from them you learn, from them you get inspired yourself, from them you feel valued, from them you get feedback, good and bad. And for me, this is really what inspires me. My mom, for example, how caring she is, how loving she is towards my father and how she has raised us and give up all just to raise us. All traditional motherhood, some people would say. Others prefer this motherhood even nowadays. Then, more than motherhood, what inspires me is some of my friends that juggle all kinds of balls in the air. Is it to have company, family, being a wife and being a woman themselves and having also time for themselves carved out during the day. They inspire me because how do they do it, right? What is their special recipe? I learn from them. Then, of course, who inspires me as well is my children because we cannot forget that we should look at the world through the eyes of a child. And I try to do that. It's hard. And sometimes I fail as well with it, but it's fun too. And I learn so much with it and it inspires me because every day, looking through my environment, through the eyes of Gabriel, Noah, Theodor or Julia, really inspires me because I can see so much detail that I would have overlooked if I would have just looked at it with, a, with the mind of an adult who sometimes can be get, well, sometimes I can get caught in my own box of thinking and it's nice to get out of it through my children. So that is what inspires me. I think what makes me so humble, if I may say so, um, some people might disagree and say she's not humble at all, right? Which is absolutely fine um, because, you know, I cannot be everyone's piece of cake. But um, I do hear that sometimes. And I think for me is how my parents have raised me. My father has always had an ear for everyone, has always helped everyone. And um, I try to do the same because we are all privileged, and I mean privileged already with having a roof over our heads, food, safety. I don't need to be scared to be killed or raped in the street when I walk outside. Um, I have education. I have had the opportunity to go to university, pay for university. Like even in, in the great America, right? People have so much debt because they went to university. They need to pay off their student loans for the rest of their lives. And I think, you know, having all of these privileges to be able to access all of these things, which some of them are human, right? Is just, yeah, it humbles me because I know from a fact by being deployed to Kosovo when I was 18 years old, there was a little girl in a hut, had nothing. There was no windows, there was no kitchen, there was no toilet trees, there was, this. she had absolutely nothing. She was seven years old. We found her baby brother who was two years old, sleeping in, in a pile of blankets, and her parents have been gone for weeks. So I count myself as very privileged seeing something like that. And, um, and as such, I'm humble because, you know, it could have gone the other way around as well. And I could have been that little girl. And as such, it's my responsibility to give back and help as much as I can to make this world a better place. My toughest challenge, I, thinking about it, there's, there's a few and they are all equally tough because it was at different stages in my life. And I think as we grow, we create resilience and the resilience I have now, I did not have for some of the, of the challenges when I was in my 20s, for example. So for the, the young women listening, right, challenges in the 20s was that, well, I had a miscarriage. That was definitely one of my big challenges at the time because it was you know it's something that you cannot control it's nature doing its course and it's for me as, as a woman to accept that because you can't change that then um, when I joined the military even younger I was 17 years old challenge was to keep up in a male dominated environment and that was really challenging for me um, being really pushed around, getting to my limits, know my weaknesses and, and really work around that. 
Then, of course, divorce. I think divorce is always terrible for everyone. Um, divorce is terrible no matter who you are. If you are a very well-known person, a royal, um, just a regular individual who just wants to enjoy their lives, right? If a divorce happens, it's kind of like you go through the, the stages of grief as if you would have lost a loved one. Um, but it's not just with the person you're losing or breaking up with, but it's also with yourself because something is gone. And um, so that was really, really challenging. And I have really learned a lot about myself and a lot about the people around me. My support system is, of course, my family to start with. I'm very close to my dad. I really love my mom. I have a twin brother, sister. I have a big brother. Um, then my husband, uh, my ex-husband too. Uh, we talk all the time. Uh, Gabriel, Noah, Theodore, Julia, my children. And of course I have um, a really nice support system embodied by a bunch of empowering, crazy, fun, hardworking girls. So um, I have a group of girls all over the world in different geographics. I call them vitamin W, so vitamin women. They are the injection of vitamin for me to wherever I travel. I have them here in London, I have them in Estonia, I have them in Zurich, I have them in Luxembourg. I have them really all over the place. I'm creating Middle East now and the US. So that when I go to these beautiful regions, I can always call up a sister and say, hey, I'm in town. Should we hang out? Tell me about your projects. What are you doing? How can I help you? And connect them as well with each other. And that is definitely for me, when it comes to my first support system, my family, this comes very close to my, my chosen family as well, um, to have these girls around the world. Because, you know, I need that. And they have been a blessing to me uh, for decades now. Making this world a better place no matter how it, what it takes. Logistics is key and project management because having so many balls in the air as I do, being an entrepreneur, mother, wife, uh, philanthropist, advocate, uh, ambassador and all of these kind of different titles and statuses and balls in the air I have, if I would not organize myself, I think it would all crumble apart because if I don't work, all of the rest doesn't work. So I think um, yeah, to invest in a really, really good CRM system, which where you put your contacts and your agenda and your projects is key. And then also, um, yeah, your support system. I would not be who I am or where I am right now if it would not be for my amazing husband who supports me, uh, my amazing family and also my children. If my oldest, Gabriel, um, when he sees that I'm tired or I'm struggling with a task, he does not hesitate and comes and says, hey, mama, can I help you? Um, yeah, so I think that is, that is how I juggle it around. Does it always work? No. Sometimes it crumbles apart. And I, uh, after going crazy about it, I also laugh about it because that's life. Um, and then you learn as well. But uh, I, try, I try to make it work as good as I can. And it's good that the projects I'm doing are all kind of linked to each other. So don't try to diversify too much. Try to keep always an all overall theme of what you're doing, because if you have too many different themes, then it becomes really tricky. And if, if it's you listening right now, you need to tell me how you are doing that. Of course, I think um, I would call it mini burnouts. So um, even today, actually, for the interview, I woke up this morning um, after waking up three times the night with the baby and doing my emails at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning while breastfeeding. I uh, woke up at 6.30 to work, which uh, for the corporate world, I'm working in Rignier in Switzerland. I am uh, their special correspondent for uh, Equal Voice. So I was working on that. Then baby wakes up. Then I was driving to Westminster because I had an interview and a video with UNA UK where I'm the patron. It's all about UN peacekeeping. Then I had some other calls I needed to take. It is Valentine's Day, so we had lunch. Then I came home, needed to change. Baby needed to be breastfed again. Baby was sitting here until not long ago and now sitting here and talking to you. So today would be one of these days where I'm thinking, Whew, I am a bit tired and I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> so yes, I have these mini burnouts, but 
what is important is that you acknowledge them. You're not a machine. You're a human being after all. And trust me if I tell you that after this, even though I'm enjoying this very, very much, I will go and take a really nice bubble bath and just enjoy myself too as well, which is really important to avoid other mini burnouts. My one advice for women that are stuck in a relationship is it's a tricky one because, you know, it depends on where you are in the relationship. Do you have small children, right? Do you still love your husband and think he's going to change? Or your wife, right? Whoever your partner is. Um, it's really about listen to your gut. You will know what is happening and what you should do next. You know, often the, the gut really is, is telling you already what you know, what you don't want to hear. And as such, I should have listened to my gut more in the past because it would have definitely helped me with a lot of hardship. Because at the end of the day, it, it came to what it came, but I knew it already before and I didn't want to know it. So, yeah, just listen to your gut and also get advice, get help. You know, the people around you often see things from an outside perspective a little bit more clearer than you who is stuck in the middle. Because sometimes we are manipulated, right? We're sad, we're scared, and all of these things. Just, yeah, try to get help. Talk to people about it. Listen to your gut. And, you know, at the end of the day, and that sounds maybe very shallow, but you only have one life. And only you can fight for yourself. Only you can make yourself happy. So when do you start to invest in yourself? So 2022 is definitely the, the new 2019. So before the pandemic, if I may say, because now we can travel again a little bit. People are less scared. I will be launching my new NFT for Human Highness, which will be in collaboration with Thomas Isé which is a Luxembourgish artist. He goes all around the world. They call him kind of like the Banksy of, uh, of Luxembourg. And he works a lot in the US and everything. And we will create NFTs 22 of a kind, which I'm very excited. Um, from these, uh, we will drop one a day starting on International Women's Day in Dubai at the World Expo. And then on day 22, we will be launching the scarf version, so the physical 3D version of these NFTs exclusively just for these 22 pieces. So I'm very excited about that. That's one of the projects. Uh, NFTs is the big hype now. I'm very new in it. Again, am I scared? Of course I am. Am I excited? Absolutely. So I'm really excited for that. Then other things, um, there's new investments coming in. So I also do invest with my husband. We have a kind of little family office where we invest in startups that we believe in. So there's a few really exciting ones coming up. And uh, Professor Soda Borders, of course, we can travel again, which is amazing. We haven't traveled for years now. Um, so yeah, all of these amazing things and much, much more. Do not think you want to be like me. And that sounds harsh because you are not me. You can be much better. Be inspired by me, but don't, you know, a lot of young people nowadays try so much to be other people that they forget to be themselves. Specifically when it comes to social media and when it comes to all of these different metaverses and avatars and, and, and um, channels, they are forgetting who they are. And, you know, I'm very inspired if you're inspired by me, but try to be better than me because, you know, otherwise it stops. If you would be just like me, where would be the progress, right? I want to see what you do with what I have started. How, where will you take it? What will you do about it? How will you talk about it? How will you portray it? That is what I'm interested in. So if you're listening to that, do just that and tell me about it and inspire me back. So the circle will be closed and we can inspire each other. Female empowerment means supporting one another and not just doing things, but listening to one another. Because some things that I think work, 
might actually not work on the ground. So listen and talk to each other and take the decisions together. That's empowerment, community. Oh, that's a difficult one. I wouldn't say patience. <laughs> I'm not very patient and my children would agree on that. I'm very Italian. I'm half Italian, so... Um, mm, I think... Honesty. Um, I like authenticity. And I like when people are honest with me and when people are who they really are. When I can see with them, when I can look them in the eye and see the pureness, the willingness, the honesty, the love, the support. Because the eyes are the window of a soul. And so for me, one thing that is really important to me is definitely honesty and transparency. Mother, I would say. Mother. The NFT launch in Dubai. Morocco, five. Luxembourgish, German, French, English, some Arabic and some Spanish. So Arabic and Spanish are counted as one. Tip top, which means perfect. Chocolate and champagne. Saxophone. I play saxophone since 26 years. No more, 28 years. Ambitious. Adventure. Thank you so much, Celestia, for having me on Vampire. I'm really, really excited to hear all of your feedback of what you think of my feature.